Hey everyone, I'm really excited for this YouTube video that I'm doing today. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I'm waiting for some, I, I, I need to order some um, updates to my camera setup so that I can actually do these on my actual camera. So I'm sorry that I, I haven't actually put up um, a new YouTube video starting off the series that I talked about in the last video that I did on hearing God's voice. And so um, I'm wanting to put the first one of those out today. This is gonna be, I don't know how long I'm gonna do this. I don't know how long, and I feel kind of goofy saying series. I'm this this video series. I'm, I'm way not professional enough to be using language like that, but I don't have another word for it. I don't know what else to call it. So it's gonna be a, a video series on hearing God's voice. Practically, how do we do that? Activations for that and some of my own testimony wrapped into this. Now, as a disclaimer, I do wanna say a couple of things. Um, I am not a prophet. Um, I have never claimed and never will claim unless the Lord should choose to do something different, but um, I do not claim to be a prophet. I just do claim though that 100% it is normal, I believe easier than what we think, and it should be the most normal thing in the believer's life to hear the voice of God. I believe half of you watching this have actually heard the voice of God and maybe in ways that you just, you didn't recognize because you haven't been trained, discipled, or have had your senses tuned to recognize the movings and breathings and nudges of the person Holy Spirit. Um, I believe that as we're going to look today in John chapter 10, if you have a Bible with you and you want to open your Bible, uh, that's going to be the text that we're in. Um, I believe that if you are saved, you call yourself a Christian, Jesus lives inside of you, it is a part of your normal birthright to hear God's voice. I believe that it works out best when we are naturally supernatural in this approach um, and we keep it as simple as possible. Um, and I do just want to say a lot of these videos I've tried to keep like below five minutes um, because this is a series and this is more of an actual teaching. This is this is going to be um, I'm trying to design these between 12 to 15 minutes. So something like if you're like a lot of times I listen to videos or podcasts as I'm like doing a cool down in my workout or stretching something that's or like I only have like a 20 minute commute to work every day. So sometimes listening to an hour long podcast can get a little bit tedious. So these short messages that can be quick, just like hope injections into our day. Um, that, that's the that's the desire that I'm going for with these. But um, to the point, uh, just, just, just right into the video, I think it would be best if we started off with John chapter 10, laid a foundation of the word and went from there. Um, so if you want to read with me, I'm beginning in John chapter 10, verse 25, and we're going to go from verse 25 to verse 30. Now stay with me through this as I'm reading. This is building to the practical steps, which will be in the last couple minutes. But, uh, but I promise that um, we are getting there because that's the whole point of these videos, not to just inform you, but to equip and empower you. Jesus answered them, I have told you the truth already and you did not believe me. The proof of who I am is revealed by all the miracles that I do in the name of my Father. Jesus is revealed in the miraculous works and in the miracle signs and wonders that he performs. We do not trust in manifestations, but we trust in the manifested one. You cannot look at Jesus Jesus and separate a life of miracles, signs and wonders from him as not being normal accompanying signs of the presence and person named Jesus. We do not exalt signs and wonders. We exalt the person in union with them. But Jesus is revealed by the miracles that he does. Verse 26, yet you stubbornly refuse to follow me. You stubbornly refuse to follow me because you are not my sheep. As I've told you before, this, now this is to you, you as the Christ follower that are watching this. My own sheep will hear my voice and I know each one. Rest in the fact today, I find so much pleasure in the fact that, that, that God looks at you and knows you. Honestly, life itself could be boiled down to discovering for the rest of your life just how deeply you are known by God. If we never graduated from anything else other than the fact that he knows you, I, I would say that's probably a, bit, a pretty good place to, to live your life in. And this brings us to our first point with hearing God's voice is when you go into a time of hearing God's voice or praying it, and I'm just gonna present this in a way that's super practical. Say you go into a prayer room classroom, your office, your car, 
I'm just, and, and, and this is just what I do. You don't have to do this. I, I, in the words of David Wagner, if it's not practical, it's probably not spiritual. So I, this is sometimes literally what I'll do. Let's just take the scenario of driving in your car. Say you're driving, you clear off the items on your seat next to you, um, maybe turn on music that is soul ministry music, instrumental, something like that. I'm not trying to make a moment more spiritual. I'm soothing my mind and soothing my heart and creating an atmosphere where there's peace around me so that the chaos can cease. And I just imagine in my heart, Jesus sitting in the seat next to me. After all, God lives in you. The garden has been redeemed. We have been placed back into co-union, oneness with Jesus. He is Jehovah Shammah, the Lord that is present, God who is present, Emmanuel, God with us. Imagine him with you. Make that situation real. God is here with me. Even right now, as you're watching this video, a, uh, an amazing, incredible man named Brother Lawrence. Um, if you want a book on learning and hearing the voice of God, practicing the presence of God by Brother Lawrence, incredible, incredible, incredible. Become aware of the fact that this hoodie that I'm wearing, the shirt that you're like, the, the pants that you're wearing, the socks that you're wearing, Jesus is more real even than those things. Become fixated on the fact he's here. This is a more real reality than the oxygen that I'm breathing right now itself and position him in the car with you. Set him before you. The book of Habakkuk actually talks about this, that I set the Lord, the, the, the Lord is set before me. So Jesus is before you. Now let's continue reading. My own sheep will hear my voice and I know each one and they will follow me. I give to them the gift of eternal life and they will never be lost and no one has the power to snatch them out of my hands. My father who has given them to me as his gift, you are the father's gift. As you are in this place of having Jesus next to you, it's not so much what you need to do. Step one, it is what it is that you need to believe. First step in hearing God's voice, what do I need to believe? Not what do I need to do? When you sit down to have coffee with a friend and you're across the table from them, I just went out with uh, two really good friends of mine, mine, mine the other night. And as we're sitting there, we're talking and hanging out. No effort had to be put into it. Like conversation naturally overflowed because I know what they think about, about me. And, and, and what I think about them is I'm delighted and pleased to, to even be in the fellowship and presence of these two individuals hanging out and having quality time together. It was what I believed in that moment that made fellowship naturally available. If you go into your time with Jesus, I can't tell you how many times I just, I, I, I get so frustrated. I come in and, I, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm flexing and squeezing, trying to create an encounter out of thin air. Do not worship the encounter come fixated that you are known by Jesus and you are Jesus's gift. He wants you there more than you want him to be there. Just step one, not what do I need to do? What do I need to believe? That is step one. Verse 29, my father who has given them to me as his gift is the mightiest of all and no one has the power to snatch them from my father's care. The father and I are one. So step one, what do I need to believe? Step two, become fixated within that belief that you and the father are one that moment like like he he is there with you and then step three i i i i believe in hearing god's voice and this is just practical i'm not saying you 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 don't have to do this and i'm not saying don't do this god totally answers yes or no questions i have just found don't ask god a yes or no question and i'm not saying like there's people that I know, I ask God yes or no questions all the time. I know people that do that. Ask him something that really, pray prayers that place a demand on the heart of God to actually respond. Jesus, what attribute do you want me to focus on about you today? And be still and listen. Jesus, what is it that you think of me? I believe that if we captured the revelation of what does God think about us, half the torment struggles and demonic activity in our lives would cease to exist uh, cease to exist as we become obsessed with the reality of what God the Father thinks of us so let's just get super practical for a minute 
I'm sitting in my bedroom. Right now I'm sitting in my truck. If you're sitting in your office, what does that moment look like? One, I come in. I shut the door behind me. When you pray, go to your father who is in secret and shut the door behind you. So the word says very clearly, where's the father? In secret, behind closed doors. He is in a time of set aside time that you have set aside for him. Be intentional with that time. I come in. He's already there. He's actually waiting for you. That would probably, that's a good belief that I know I need to absorb more and more. And then see him. Actually, actually see him with the eyes of your heart. Make him present there with you. Make him present there with you. And I, I'll have follow-up videos that explain that a little bit more. So if some of you are saying like, what do you mean? Like actually close my eyes and see him? Yes, actually close your eyes and see him. As Ephesians says, as Paul says, I pray that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened. See him with you. What do you believe in that moment? Not what you need to do. And then pray out of that belief of seeing him, imagining him with you with healthy beliefs and then pour out the affections of your heart to him. And then this is the most challenging thing. My gosh, I fail at this. Embarrassingly so throughout the week. And then just listen. A book that changed my life when I was in Teen Challenge was a book called 30 Ways God Speaks by a guy named Larry Creeder. I was in the uh, library at Teen Challenge and I found this book. I believe that Holy Spirit led me to this book. I'm in the library of Teen Challenge, 30 Ways God Speaks. And I essentially copied the book word for word into my journal so that um, I, even when I left the program, I, I could left Teen Challenge, I could just have it with me. And one of the things that Larry Creeder says is, um, oftentimes when we're waiting for God's voice, expect his voice to come in flowing thoughts, pictures, and images in your mind. Flowing thoughts, immediate pictures, or just things that pop up in your mind. And when we're learning to hear God's voice, don't make it, what is the political situation and solution for, for our climate politically right now in the world? Just start off with God, who are you and who am I? Start off on the foundation of pure relationship. God, who are you and who am I? And, and then and just wait and listen. And, and I really do believe it's that easy. And if you find yourself getting stuck, like, this is stupid, nothing, nothing's happening. Like, and, and you just feel like, all right, there's nothing going on. Offer up just tender phrases of adoration. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. There, um, I'm, I, I'm really needing to learn the value of adoration. Um, sit long enough that you separate your mind from your heart and you, and you just pray from your heart, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Pray John 10, Jesus, thank you that I'm your sheep. I'm your gift. You know me. You see me. You're here right now. And then just be still again. Don't go into declarations. No need to scream, hoot and holler. I would even say if you pray in tongues, pray in the spirit in this time, this is a great time. I believe, personal opinion, to utilize that gift and then just wait. And then here's the thing, steward the measure that you're given. This is the next step. I don't know whatever this is, three, four, five. I think it's step four. Steward the measure that you're given. There was a testimony um, from a guy named Randy Clark of the, he was learning to experience the presence of God and the presence of God landed on him and his thumb started to twitch, like his thumb started twitching. And he's like, I could stop that if I wanted to, because I'm not doing that. And the presence of God was ministering around him. He was in a service where the presence of Jesus was really stirring. I could stop that if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. He celebrated and stewarded the measure that he was given. Sometimes Guys, I can't tell you how guilty I am of God speaks and he says something and I'm like, okay, okay, but what else? Matthew, have you, have, you, have, you, have you even stewarded the treasure that I've just given you right there? Have you stewarded the simplicity of just being known by me? Like, have, have you stewarded the simplicity 
of the fact that there was a torn veil that even is making this communion possible, my biggest downfall is my pride that gets in the way of my ability to know him, thinking that he owes me something, thinking that the encounter has to look like something. I so badly need to be set free from the idol that I have set up and raised up of thinking that the encounter and touch needs to look like someone else that I really admire and their history or their private time with the Lord. Breathe him in, see him, think rightly about yourself and him, pray, and then listen, and then steward the measure that you've been given. Whatever it is, no matter how small, there's no such thing as a small word from God. That's a belief system that needs to die. There's no such thing as a small word from God. And then receive it, steward it, and savor it. And then go, go, go from that time reciprocating it to the world around you. So I'm going to be talking about this topic for a while. We're at a, a little over 16 minutes right now. Hopefully you're, you're still watching. Um, I'm going to have another video that's on this, diving deeper into more of some of these principles, like taking, taking them one by one. We'll, we'll go through the book of Habakkuk, which has a really, really great um, process for, for hearing God. That just gets super practical. But um, let me just pray right now for you all. Jesus, I'm praying right now. I pray that anyone watching this, please, please use this video to encourage the heart of anyone that just says like, man, like just forget this. I don't know how to hear God's voice. Like I don't hear him. Hearing him is not for me. Everyone else can hear him, but I can't. That's such hopeless garbage. And I just reject that over people's lives. And you would bring us into the incredible union and reality and bliss of being held, known, and adored and romanced by you. Please let this be said of our souls, Jesus. In your almighty name, amen. Love you guys. Thank you guys for watching this. I pray that it's encouraging to your hearts and souls. And I pray that as you go throughout this week, you would have intentional time behind the closed door where he is waiting for you. Bless you guys.